Welcome into the fourth side presented by UVA Community Credit Union and powered by Kiswi. I'm your host, Tony Covington, for this special edition of The Fourth Side, sitting in for my man, Ahmad Hawkins, a.k.a. The Ball Hawk, who is attending a, a funeral for his uh, Aunt Laverne. So shout out, prayers up to the family and Aunt Laverne. Uh, we have a, a special, special, special outing today uh, where we are bringing forth the members, the Groundbreakers, uh, the first African-American scholarship athletes at the University of Virginia in 1970. So here we are for the 50th anniversary. The, the Groundbreakers interview, uh, 50th anniversary integration of Virginia football can be seen this weekend on virginiasports.com, a Virginia Cavalier fan, Facebook page, and YouTube as well. Let's just jump right into it and get to introducing these amazing men. Mr. Harrison Davis, Stan Land, Kent Merritt, and John Rainey. How you doing today, gentlemen? How you doing today? I'm doing all right. Hey, man, I've been looking forward to this because I honestly did not know the story. And so I've been anxious to meet you all. And my first question is, how did it feel to be the first? Who wants to take that? I say, who's going to take it? Well, yeah, hey, yeah. I, I want to hear from each one of you because, I, hey, each one of you had a different scenario on, in how you got there, coming from different walks of life. So why, why don't we start with you, Harrison? Yeah. Well, uh, it was, um, you know, it's pretty interesting. I mean, the bottom line is, is um, I was very familiar with the academic standing of Virginia had no idea about the um, athletic standing of Virginia. But um, you know, when I got an opportunity to, to sign and to go play football, it was uh, pretty exciting. Wow. What about you, John? Well, I, uh, from the 10th grade on, I had no uh, inclinations of uh, really going to uh, college. I didn't have any plans. Uh, mm -hmm. where I, from. I thought I'd be home working somewhere in the coal mines or something, Virginia or something. I don't know where I was going to end up. I, I didn't know. I didn't hear about UVA until maybe my uh, end of my sophomore year, my junior year. And I had some folks that uh, said, well, you ought to go to UVA. And those folks, did, they went to UVA earlier, previously. And I said, who's UVA? Because I heard about tech and all the big schools. And so I ended up at UVA at the urgence of some of my uh, uh, mentors and, and uh, sponsors, and uh, and it was uh, I didn't know anything about UVA, and and, and it didn't seem like uh, 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 anything different at that time. We didn't think we were, you know, blazing any trails at the moment. We were just looking for a place to go play football. And so, mm. we, what know, about you, Stan? Uh, Tony, I'm I'm very much like John, to be frankly honest with you. I. Uh, Grew up in a very, very small town. If you blink, you, you're through the town. Um, <laughs> 65 kids in my graduating class. Uh, very small school. Didn't really have any uh, knowledge that I was going to go off and play college football, football much less go to, go to college. Uh, we couldn't really afford it. So my uh, track was likely going to be into the armed services and, got, and likely end up in Vietnam. I was fortunate enough to have a, a high school coach and athletic director that believed in me and believed in my capabilities and um, pushed me towards the University of Virginia where he had gone to grad school. So that's how I ended up here. Um, that Coming here, <laughs> I was nervous and anxious <laughs> and excited all at the same time. <laughs> Definitely understand that. And then Kent Merritt, uh, the, the fourth musketeer, uh, you know, who was from Lane High School in Charlottesville, over 75 offers uh, when it came down to it. Parents really pushed him towards uh, coming to UVA. And, um, you know, he, he, was, he was the one that kind of wrangled you guys all together, recruiting you guys to come uh, to Virginia. And, 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 then, and then he signs. And so, you know, it, it, just, it just seems like it was, it was meant to be. When you, when you all first arrived on campus, uh, there was nobody that looked like you. Did, was that 
something that caught you off guard? How, how did you handle that? Well, initially for me, um, it uh, it looked big. That's for sure. I right. mean, even then, University of Virginia looked big. Yeah. Now it's enormous. So <laughs> I mean, it was uh, it wasn't exact. You know, like I can say it was a little bit intimidating. You know, when I um, I first got here. But then again, like I said, you know, we had the um, uh, I had the knowledge of the academic uh, standards of University of Virginia and with the encouragement of my mother, um, I decided that it would be, you know, probably a, a good place to go. And, you know, like I said, you know, it was pretty intimidating when I first got here, but ultimately I felt like I was ready. It was okay. one thing that I did, and I thought that I always prepared myself for the next level. And when I got an opportunity to go to college, I figured that I was going to be ready to go play college. So, wow. And John, what? How, how did how did it impact you when you first stepped on the uh, onto the grounds? Well, I was a little bit intimidated because uh, uh, to me, Charlottesville was a, a metropolis <laughs> to me <laughs> because. Uh, you know, you're coming from a town of 5,000, and then all those shows built on the head, like 25,000, I think, at that time. And, and I think they had, I forgot the student population. So I thought I was going to a bigger place, you know, and and, uh, uh, and I was kind of wide-eyed, you know, when I, I stepped on the ground. And, uh, uh, of course, I came uh, uh, during the summer uh, before we started practice, and uh, I stayed in Mim Gym. Uh, for the summer and, and, and work for a couple of months before we even started practice. And uh, uh, Kit and I hung out together and she sort of gave me the layout of the city and, and those kind of things. But I was excited, uh, to say the least, uh, wondering if I was going to, really wonder if I was going to make it or not because, you know, I was just, I felt like I was just, a, you know, a pea in a big pot, you know. And uh, I had a lot of I had a lot of doubts. I had a lot of doubts. I knew I could play football, and, uh, and I, I was hoping that would take me through. But I also was a little bit intimidated by the academics. You know, they were talking about UVA was you know like the Ivy League of the South and that, and, and uh, so I just kind of said, okay, let, let's see what happens here. And uh, and so as I got into it, it was tough at first. It was really tough. We had three days. And the only thing you wanted to do was sleep. And you had classes, you know, you couldn't sleep. And so I'd be up 3 o'clock in the morning with my uh, face in the book, you know. And uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was tough. It was tough, especially that first year. Yeah, Very and tough. then you staying in Mim Jim. It's, it's Hades hot in Mim Jim. Oh, my so. goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you get a workout just going to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Stan, what about you? Man, it was um, it was an experience for me uh, just facing the academics. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I thought I was a pretty good student until I got here, and so I had to really <laughs> go down and work extremely hard. Uh, after a while, I, I, you know, I caught on. I I was doing okay. I, I tell you what really helped mm -hmm. me though, and and I think it helped all of us to be frankly honest with you. Uh, we had a we had a young freshman coach that was really uh, an exciting uh, an exciting person, Al Gro. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. our, uh, our freshman coach, and he was really vested in uh, his players and particularly seemed vested in us. And so it was really, really great having someone like that as a coach who uh, was concerned about us and concerned about our, our success not only on the football field, but off the football field, um, right. in school, in life, et cetera. And oh, that's by it. That's the way, I might, mention, I might mention, he still does that today. You know, it's 50 years later, and he's still calling and texting and stopping by when he's, um, when he's in town. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Had a coach like yeah. that, uh, Danny Wilmer, and our strength coach, John Gamble, uh, when I came through, we were, yeah. were very similar to, to the way that you describe Coach Grow. Um, and, you know, so you guys, I, I think that that probably really helped that he had that that freshman group of you guys. And I mean, you guys were four and one. You were having some success. And Harrison, you when I, when I watch 
clips of you, man, you, you had a different kind of swagger, you know, and I'm sure that was very different uh, when you hit the grounds and, and people started watching you play and how you did things. I, I just want to take it back to uh, this Virginia Tech story that I've been hearing about. Uh-oh. No, you don't. Um, no, you, don't. Um, you know, I really, I really want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Come on. Lay, lay, lay it on me, Harrison. Lay it on me. Lay it on me. I'll tell you the. You know, to me, you know, to be successful as an athlete, you know, you have to have a a pretty high level of confidence, mm-hmm. you know. Um, to me, you know, there's no such thing as being overconfident if you can back it up. Fast. So that's kind of the way I played sports in general. You know, I never walked on any field or court or anything thinking that somebody was going to beat me. It's just that simple. Because I was definitely committed to putting in the time Mm -hmm. to get in shape, to be strong, to run, to be fast, whatever. I was willing to do whatever it took to be successful on an athletic field. Um, That translated into my academics, of course, after my first year, where I almost didn't, wasn't eligible to play my second year because of what I did my first year. But uh, I went to summer school and righted the ship and you know, got an opportunity to proceed, you know, with my athletic career at that particular point. But um, the Virginia Tech game was, um, you know, I mean, it was a, a rivalry game. And, you know, I always took rivalries very, very seriously. And the fact that that's all I heard about, you know, Virginia, everybody always threw that tech behind it. And I'm saying, yeah. no, yeah. not Virginia Tech, the Cavaliers. And um, at that particular point, they came up that particular year of the last, you know, uh, that particular game. Um, they came up with a group they called the Tech Explosion with Don Strock and a few other people. And they thought they were they thought they were pretty good. But at the time, you know, um, I was injured. Uh, the game. We were running out the clock at South Carolina the week before. And my left tackle got pushed down on top of me as I took a knee. And I went over on my side and separated my right shoulder with like eight seconds to go in the game. So Mm -hmm. I couldn't get my arm over my shoulder all week. So I threw a couple of interceptions in the tech game, got booed viciously (laughs) when I came off the field (laughs) after the second one. And you know, kind of had a visceral response to the whole situation by <laughs> giving the finger to the crowd. <laughs> That's about it. I mean, that was that was that was all I had. And mm-hmm. to me, that was the ultimate expression as far as what I was feeling. You know, when somebody mm-hmm. boos you like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I never. Um, you know, that that really kind of hit home, and I think it was something that uh, imprinted on me for the rest of my career. Mm. I, hey, I, I, I love it. I was a trash talker myself, so I think me and you could have, we really could have coexisted oh, yeah. really well. Really oh, yes. well. For sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> John, you had a, you had a slashy, a slashing kind of, kind of style uh, about you when I was watching some of the, some of the highlights of you to tell me um, in thinking about, running backs that have come through Virginia. Do you, do you see anybody that's kind of similar uh, to your slashing type of style? I don't. I, I really don't. Uh, haven't looked at it uh, from that point of view. I know I always liked Gail Sayers. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, he, would, he would find a hole, and uh, uh, he would kind of there'd be a cutback or whatever, but when he saw it, he went for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then as he had good peripheral vision, too. And uh, so I, if I had to uh, say that I like somebody, I, I tried to emulate. It was maybe uh, Gail Sayers, and so uh, he was sort of like the best back. I was never one of those big bat running backs you could run over people and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. But my, mm-hmm. I was more like Kent Merritt. If I saw somebody coming straight at me, I was gonna <laughs> make some. It was it was called survival. <laughs> it was called survival. And you, and, and you you gonna miss that hard hit so you can live to run another play. <laughs> so so I, 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 I wasn't a hero in that situation. But you know when I 
whenever I saw the hole, he would hit it. And then after that, you get past the linebackers, just just one or two cuts, and you you know you're off to the races. And that's what I always mm-hmm. do. And uh, and that and I always like the uh, uh, I always like the off tackle plays because I always when I used to coach football I told my uh, running backs I said you got an S curve I said once you once you get through past that tackle you come straight up and then you cut back out as an S as an S curve and, and it'll get you to the end zone most of the time so I just uh, uh, there were there were just routes that you knew you had once you got to a certain point and I tried to get to those routes. And that helped a little bit, uh, but uh, I just wish we had the uh, uh, people up front that could help out a little bit more. But I'm not going to talk about that too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, hey, we we've struggled we've struggled with that for a number of years uh, uh, until now. Now we've got a good offensive yeah. line that opens up big yeah. holes, and oh my you know, God, they they, they, <laughs> make, they make it happen. They make it happen. Yes, they do. Oh my gosh, Oof. man. Okay. okay. So, so as as we wrap, as we begin to wrap up, um, what can you each one of you say about your time at UVA and your accomplishments? We'll start with you, Stan. Well, um, what I'd like to say is that uh, UVA changed me. I came here not um, with a perspective on what I could do in this world, and um, ended up graduating and going off and uh, working for some very large companies and traveling the world and you know I, I feel like uh, I've been I've been very fortunate very fortunate to having gone through that experience gained an education made some long lasting friendships and be able, and being able to parlay that into a successful life for myself Wow. Awesome. What about you, John? Um, I have no regrets. Um, we, if people talk about uh, why did you go to UVA? Uh, why didn't you go here or there? Why didn't you go to uh, uh, you know, HBCU and those kind of things? And uh, I said that was the, the Virginia was the best opportunity for me at the time. And uh, uh, I had a little bit of support from home. People could come up to see me play. And uh, I think that best thing that I could say that happened to me is I got a good education, a worldview education. I met uh, my wife and had three beautiful children who were professionals in their own right now. And so I just felt like the legacy was that we came to play football, but uh, we uh, left a great example for others to follow. Uh, None of us got thrown in jail. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in trouble. We, didn't have, we didn't have any, uh, uh, you know, negativity, and we graduated. We all graduated in four years, and uh, uh, and so I think we we left something there for people to follow, and I think the legacy of having uh, 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 been successful afterwards was uh, I'm very I'm very appreciative of UVA, really. If I had to say anything uh, at all, I'm appreciative of having gone there. And I don't regret it at all. Awesome. And Harrison, you? Well, um, the you know the fact that I was able to go to University of Virginia in spite of uh, the 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 pervasive opinion that uh, we couldn't handle it academically, um, and the fact that I did handle it academically, and that we all handled it academically. And um, like I said, we're successful people in our own rights, graduated, moved on to do bigger and better things. I mean, mm-hmm. there's always yeah. had to be somebody who was going to be first, you know, at anything. And, um, you know, the fact that we could go to University of Virginia, spend four years, uh, have a very positive experience and to all graduate and move on. I mean, the idea of playing football at the time, one thing I always believed about football, if you're any good, you're going to get noticed. And so consequently, you know, um, my senior year, I, I had moved to wide receiver and all that old stuff. Didn't know a thing about what I was doing. You know, I knew nothing about playing wide receiver at all. And being a track guy and being as big as I was, I mean, I was doing everything on speed and size. And I got drafted, of course, you know, by the San Diego Chargers. But 
you know, that whole idea of thinking that if you go to Virginia, you won't be discovered. You know, nobody will know anything about you. Because my one, one ultimate idea I had throughout life since the early 60s was that I was going to go to play pro football. Johnny Unitas was my idol. You know, I mean, I watched him from 59, 60 on. And uh, that's how I got into playing quarterback. And that was my whole idea. But I had to go through the academics of the University of Virginia. And we were able to do it. I mean, I depended on my coaches, my three good friends or whatever that I went with. Uh, we were able to cope together. And like I said, have a very positive experience. And I think that showed anybody coming behind us that you can have a positive experience at the University of Virginia. And so, you know, I think that was very important. And even today, if I get a chance to talk about it, you know, I'm going to speak highly of it because it's about, as far as I'm concerned, it's about getting a good education, leading and, you know, showing and being a good example for anybody, you know, who's coming behind you. And I thought that was something that we accomplished. And like I said, very positive. You know, sometimes, you know, when your stomach got turned a little bit, but, you know, I mean, we dealt with it. We dealt with it positively. We moved on, on to other successful things. So wow. I think that's the important thing about it. Wow. That is absolutely awesome. And I want to say thank you all for being the first. Thank you for breaking ground because if the the the, the four of you individuals aren't don't integrate this team, then there there are no Tony Covingtons and Ahmad Hawkins and all, all the the great players that have come through uh, the university. And so I I want to thank you all so so very very much. And we're going to leave it with some final thoughts from Kent Merritt uh, before our, we take our first break. I think that it's important for um, the history of these types of these types of change agents to be recognized for what they are is a beginning of a um, uh, change in society, basically uh, change in how we live, change in how we see each other, um, and um, you know a, a change in uh, the University of Virginia, quite frankly. find we have a way about us it comes from being unafraid of the hard things never losing sight of the little things and when all is said and done coming together to enjoy the good things because every inch every number every call we earn for the salt of the coast for the stones of the capital for the hug of skyline drive for all virginia Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I wanted to make sure that you definitely catch the groundbreakers in the 50th anniversary this weekend on virginiasports.com, Virginia Facebook's page, and the U and YouTube for the Cavaliers. All right, as we roll in, we got to bring in the man, the myth, the legend, Chase Minifield, two-time first-team All-ACC Cavalier great and former Washington football team cornerback. What's good, family? What's good, Tico? You doing all right? Oh man, hey, look, uh, I'm 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 just surviving like everybody else, man. How you doing? Hey, I can't complain. We out here grinding, in the ground running. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, hey, fam, we got you in for the ACC Pick'em this week, uh, presented by Red Diamond Coffee and Tea. Shout out to Red Diamond Coffee and Tea. I like tea, so you know. <laughs> Get it in. <laughs> Look, <laughs> let's roll into the first one. Number four, Clemson at Florida State. Uh, I'm going definitely with uh, Clemson. You know, the uh, the chief putting the uh, the war the war stick down in the ground don't do the same thing it used to do down in Florida State, man. But so I'm <laughs> going to go with that Clemson pick for sure. Yeah, Clemson missing a lot of pieces, too. I mean, uh, Florida State's missing a lot of pieces, a lot of turnover, a lot of opt-out. Uh, and that, that the program seems to be struggling. But, hey, man, you know what they say about a wounded animal. 
Uh, and uh, Clemson is after that loss to Notre Dame. Uh, they getting they getting QB one back. I think they they feel like they got something to prove. They might drop a seventy spot on them this week. Wow. Well, I know that when we went down there and won against Florida State, that's probably my favorite game of my career. Was when that the chief on the horse came and put that flaming that flaming arrow into the grass. That was that just that just started sparked it off. That's what I was waiting for. So yeah, uh, no I don't doubt. Know if it has that same that same feeling no more. But when I was there, it was hype. <laughs> right, no doubt, no doubt. All right, game number two, Virginia Tech at Pitt. Uh, you know, for there's been a ho- house of horrors for the Hokies down uh, when they when they head up to Pittsburgh. I mean, you know, not not that we really care. <laughs> but yeah. what's your take? Definitely Pitt. I think this is a trick question, uh, but Pitt for sure. Uh, I, I I just can't I can't I can't get myself to go to the other side of the fence. Uh, bro, that don't make you a bad person, you know, real talk. So, yeah, me, I'm going with Pitt as well. All right, number 21, Liberty versus NC State. I'm hearing a lot of good things about Liberty. I haven't got a chance to watch them play. Um, but from what I'm hearing, it's the, they're, they're, they're looking like the real deal in, the, in, this, in this thing. So I'm, I'm going to go with Liberty. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I'm actually going to go Liberty as well. They have proved that you know they don't they don't care who they're playing. They're two and zero versus the ACC this year, so they they don't they don't fear it. And so uh, you know, anytime we get to show more clips of Liberty beating Virginia Tech, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> We're just looking for excuses to show the clips anyway. So you know, I'm I'm uh, you like it, I love it. <laughs> for sure. All right, and then. Our last game, UVA versus Abilene Christian. Obviously, I'm going with the Hoos, man. I, I, I like our team. I think it's a, you know, a, a younger squad that, especially on offense, that is uh, is growing at every game. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I, I really feel like they are coming into their own. The the using the strength of that offensive line. You've got a young quarterback who is emerging, uh, who's taking be, be taking care of the ball. Started off a little slow, man. I really think it it hurt this team having to replace so much production on offense, uh, losing a Bryce Perkins, Joe Reed, Hasee Dubois on the offensive side, uh, and then they didn't have an off season really to a spring to really build that continuity. Uh, and, and then over the summer, just they didn't have the, the time. And so I feel like, you know, where the, the normal first games you would have where you're playing a William & Mary, a ODU, a VMI, all respect to those teams, but it's not jumping into playing Clemson, jumping into playing mm-hmm. Carolina, so on and so forth. So I think, you know, it's been a little bit of a slow start. Uh, the defense has, has, has really started creating havoc these last couple of weeks. I think they got started slow. Uh, and so I think Virginia – Running that ball this weekend, using that big offensive line, mixing in the pass. Uh, I think the Cavaliers will, will do well this weekend. So, yeah, what what are you what are you up to these days, fam? I am. Uh, I got a lot of business going on. Uh, I run two companies on a day to day basis. One's a tech company, and one's a uh, um, a service company for student housing um, that we mm-hmm. run across the country. Uh, but essentially, besides that, I do a little podcast for UVA alumni. UVA sports alumni that you were a guest on um, that we have fun Absolutely. with, mm-hmm. but but ultimately it's the same thing I've been doing my entire life, waking up and, and finding a way to get better. Uh, no it's, doubt. Just, it's just I don't. It's just that my body won't allow me to run forties and jump no more. So. <laughs> <laughs> man, old, old old age sucks, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. But hey, I, I guess long as I can get out there and hit that little white golf ball, as long, long as oh, I can yeah, do we that. Play. I don't, I'm okay. I, I'm, you know, I, that's a sport. It's the most challenging sport I played in my life. People are like T Cub, you, you play in the league. I'm like, man, you don't understand that little white ball man. and all that green me and grass. Dad, and me and my dad, we still out there every day. Every I, he, my dad was going on sixty something, but he takes that thing so serious, man. He he will not let me beat him. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember that we had like the Virginia building the program back in the day when I was playing, and we had a little golf segment. And, I almost got him that day, and uh, I'm just glad the UVA faithful thinks he's no good. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. That is hilarious. So yeah, man, we uh we got to shout out who's the Who's Wear podcast, and uh you know just uh who who's been some of your some of your latest guests that you've had on. Uh, we had a track kid recently named Logan Carrington. Well, obviously, we got some, we got a long history of episodes, so we got about 150 episodes where okay, you know, yours is on there, Marcus Hagen's on there. Um, mm-hmm. 
We got Perry Jones. A lot of the guys I play with, O'Day, Anthony Harris, Ronnie McLeod. A lot of those guys is on there. Um, so it's some good stories. My favorite one is I saw Walcott, who a lot of the UVA guys may not be too familiar with, but he had a he had a little run into with the law after while he was playing with the Cleveland Browns. So he has an interesting story that I would suggest people to check out on our on our podcast. Um, and yeah, it's just been good catching up with everybody and staying in touch. Yeah, I mean that's awesome. That's awesome. You when the last time you had a chance to uh, bl- bless us on the grounds in Charlottesville. I was there for Black Alumni Weekend last year. I think that might have been the last time uh, that I was there. I planned on catching some games. Every time they're up here in Kentucky area, I go to the Louisville game. Um, so I'll be I'll be seeing the team and the coaches and things of that nature. Uh, okay. But, yeah, anytime I can – I got to get down there and catch Clint since he's back there on the coaching staff now, Clint Santo. Oh, uh, yeah. See, see what he's doing down there. And uh, That's good stuff. Seemed like, he got, seemed like he's racking up some sacks with some guys down there, so that's good. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Well, fam, uh, we show we show appreciate you. We show appreciate no you as uh, we we roll into our final break before we get into the Chevy keys to the game. Um, but man, hey, we need to uh, connect soon. All right, for sure, for sure. All right, be well. All right. Welcome back in. And here we are to discuss the Chev- the Charlottesville Chevy keys to the game, Virginia versus Abilene Christian. Number one, as we roll into it, don't get burned. All right. Peyton Manziel is a QB that can hurt you over 61 percent completion percentage, five touchdown and his best five touchdowns and his best game is at Army with three touchdowns, 279 yards. So corners, don't sleep, beware. Second, pound the rock. Good balance over the past couple of weeks, long runs and keeping explosive plays off the field. Uh eight, the Abilene Christian gives up almost 250 yards rushing a game, so we need to run the ball, run the ball and run the ball in not necessarily that order all about us that's just simply it it doesn't have to do with abilene christian this game is about uva focusing and getting the job done uh abilene this abilene christian's final game of the year it could equate to kind of their super bowl not really but you know uh but so they just need to the the cavaliers just need to focus in on them stay disciplined create good habits uh for the stretch run uh, that we have because it's it's a it's a healthy stretch with with after abilene christian with florida state boston college and virginia tech so they need just need to get locked and stay focused now as we roll in you know i want my calves to Continue the momentum this week to keep grinding. The two-game stretch has been great. Uh, we've seen a lot of good things. We've seen areas of improvement, but we've seen a resilient Cavalier team, uh, which is a hallmark of Bronco Mendenhall and uh, what the culture that he has exhibited. It's called the standard. It's earned, not given, and it's been amazing to, to see it, quite honestly. Um, I know that you know these guys can looking forward to that Thanksgiving and maybe a little bit of turkey, but you know Broncos not letting them go anyway, so they need to just lock in and enjoy that turkey amongst each other. Uh, that's and that's all I'm gonna say about this weekend. But um, lastly, uh, I just want to say, hey, I have enjoyed this outing for the fourth side, uh, the groundbreakers, and getting to meet four individuals who've paved the way for a lot of us to attend the University of Virginia. Uh, That has been amazing. Would love to stay in contact with those gentlemen and just make sure that you guys 
watch that this weekend please 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 uh i'm narrating too by the way so yeah you know i it, but it's a it's a wonderful story right? and again you can find it virginiasports.com the virginia cavalier facebook page virginia cavalier twitter page so just make sure you lock in and uh make it happen you know want to thank the groundbreakers uh for being on today want to thank chase mini minifield for joining us and you know just remember to watch that feature this weekend i want you all to have a safe socially distanced thanksgiving and uh keep yourself safe man you know take care of, of yourselves i know the we all want to be around family but let's make sure we're, we're doing it the right way so that we'll have other thanksgivings um, once we get through this pandemic and uh, let's just keep each other lifted i want you to guys to chase greatness to find what greatness is for you and chase it with all types of relentlessness. Yes, I said that, relentlessness. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm dead serious. I, I, why settle for being mediocre when greatness is available? So, hey, that's it for this week's episode of The Fourth Side. We are out.